Welcome to Willie D Live. I'm about to go in. I'm about to go all the way in. One of my best friends in the whole world. And Bishop Ronald Bernard Hopes of Inner Peace Community Cathedral Church. In fact, it's Inner Peace. Did I say it right? Cathedral. Inner Peace Cathedral, Cathedral Community Church. Yes. How did I get that wrong? Anyway, you can tell I don't go to church. But uh, anyway, uh, man, good man, I'm, I'm grateful to have you on the show. Man. Hey, man, it's a pleasure to be here. I thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you, man. Boy, I tell you what, man, I say, when they say God is good, God is good. Hey, man. God is good. He brought us a long way. Yes, sir. Yes, Boy, they sir. Thought, they thought we was going to be out of here, didn't they, man? Look, we both live to see 50, and they counted us out 25 years ago. 30, 30, 30. Yeah, Could have been. You trying to cheat, man. <laughs> Oh man. So man, let's let, let's get right into it, man. How you feel, man? How you feel? Man, I'm feeling pretty good uh physically. Um mentally I'm I'm pretty sharp, uh feeling pretty good, but spiritually, you know, I'm I'm a bit aggravated. Right? Yes, sir, a bit right, aggravated. You got a lot going on in the church these days, man. Too much going on in the church. And um uh it's putting a damper uh on the spirit. Uh, within the church right right what do you think about you know one of the things that uh you know i hear a lot i don't know if you hear like i hear it but a lot of uh people talk about how the church is not respected like it used to be respected uh it's a lot going on with it seemed like the church is overreaching to trying to get membership and they're it's like the bar has been lowered to be, to, 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 you know, I know the church say come as you are and all that kind of stuff. Right. But I've always thought that like you preach a certain way for the people that haven't been delivered yet, haven't been saved yet, because you're trying to bring them in. So, you know, you can, you can, you can kind of bring them in with kids glove. Mm -hmm. once, once, once you got it, when you got a member in, of the church, you don't handle the member of the church like you handle somebody who don't know, that person that's lost. The person that's a member of the church, I thought, was supposed to be held to an even higher standard. Just like the pastor is, that, pastor, that person that's supposed to be saved, that's supposed to know, mm -hmm. supposed to be held at a much higher standard. And so when you hear, these pe when you hear people say, well, you know, you, you, you know you're, you're not supposed to talk to people like that you know, in the church, Right. You know, meaning direct, being being direct and, and affirmative. I mean, what do you say to that? You know, a lot of people in the church, they don't want to be held accountable. So you have babes coming in, and for those what we call mature Christians, mm -hmm. um, they don't know how to handle the babes. And the reason being is because a lot of people have lost eye, uh, lost concept on what the church was there for. The church is there for a soul-saving ministry. It's not here to be a, uh, a business slash ink type thing. And this is the direction the church is going in. Okay. So when you have people coming in who has, um, who's been in the church, uh, you would expect for them to be held at a uh, accountability bar. But yet they're the ones who are lowering the standards. So when you find people who are lowering standards in the church, let me use this for instance. Um, here's what I love to tell the church. Everybody want to be grown, but don't nobody want to grow up. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Because growing up, you go through growing pains. Everybody want to tell somebody something, but don't nobody want to live by what they're telling that next person. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? So, right. so it hurts the church any way you look at it. Uh, uh, um, from the leadership, from the angels of the house, all the way down to the parking lot attendants. You know, you, you're, you're finding corruption in the church and like you say we're, we're reaching uh the church is now trying to reach the community but they're reaching it in the wrong way you know right. they, they're allowing everything in the church and the church should be set apart from the world right so that we can show some type of standards i mean church is having everything now but an open bar huh you speaking of an open bar <laughs> i heard that there was this church out there for christians i mean uh, not church for christians but a nightclub for tr for christians man did, have you did you hear about that i've heard about it man i've heard <laughs> about it they have having nightclubs now um uh, opening up for christians and and but here's the part that get me what do you have to have 
a, a Christian card or something to get in there? Because if not, then anybody's welcome, right? Mm -hmm. See, the, and that's what I'm saying. They, they, it's, it's getting so um, misunderstood when it comes to uh, religion, to where is that people are literally now taking the church as a joke. Right. Yeah, they're taking it as a joke. I think it is a joke when you have people inside the church uh, doing the boogaloo. And, uh, you know, this ain't somebody saved. You know, this is somebody clowning. You know, all this stuff, and falling down, <laughs> dropping, getting back up, taking the wig off, uh-uh, you know what I'm saying, doing the Michael Jackson. You yeah. know, like, I mean, like, you can just get online right now. Anybody watching this, just get online right now and just Google yeah. church madness. Google church buffoonery. Google clowning in church. And you will see all kind of strange things going on. Man, I've, I've seen them do the electric slide in church. Um, uh, I've seen them do some of everything that the world is doing. Uh, I, I've even seen one uh, preacher on Facebook at one point whipping and nay-naying in church, you know, right. doing his sermon. And okay. I'm like, okay. Okay, okay so, so speaking of that, what do you say to the people that say, well, you got to reach people where they are you, if you if you want to get the secular people this is what they like you want to get the youngsters you got to be able to relate so you got to do the nay nay and you got to let them do the nay nay see once again we are lowering our standards we are taking god out of the church and we're letting the world come in mm -hmm. um it is as if uh if you have your own house and you don't drink or you don't smoke just because you have company you're gonna let them come in and drink and smoke just to have them over to your house right you get what i'm saying <laughs> it don't make no sense a great analogy you know we we, wow. we 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 we're trying to reach the world but we going by the wrong way using the wrong methods you know that, you know that that reminds me of that was a club in houston that had like a 20-year run Mm -hmm. Maxwell's. Remember Maxwell's? Right, right. Okay, so Maxwell's would not allow any guys to come in their club with tennis shoes on. Girls right. either. You couldn't come in there with tennis shoes. And they had a successful run for like 20 years. And uh, then they started getting some competition and they panicked. Mm -hmm. As soon as the competition came, they panicked. And what happened was some of their people were leaving and going over to the competition. So in order to get them back, they said, well, let's let them in with some tennis sneakers on. You know, they, they fought it. They fought it tooth and nails. But eventually they, they, they succumbed to the pressure. And right. they said, because everybody said, you got to let them in with tennis shoes. Got to let them in with tennis shoes. And finally, they started letting them in with tennis shoes. So once they started letting people in with tennis shoes, even though... They were suffering, business started suffering, they were losing some business, they still were making good money. Mm -hmm. And they still had three, four hundred people coming in there every Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. But you know, before the competition came, the heavy competition came, they were having like over a thousand, fifteen hundred people every Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. Then it dwindled down to, you know, good three, four hundred people, but you know, they still had a solid, faithful crowd. And the thing is, is that had they held on, they could have got their crowd back anyway because the other club kind of fell off. Yeah. And, and then people, and then people also was like, got tired of the other club because it was kind of like uh, catering to the VIP thing and all that stuff. So when they changed their model, they had to close the doors. Eventually, they closed the doors. Right. See, the the church is now. Uh, because there's a church on every corner, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they're trying, they're, they're allowing more carnality take place instead of spirituality. Mm -hmm. Here's one thing. Uh, when I was getting my doctorate degree in theology, uh, I had to study the laws of the Bible and the law of harmony works in a downward spiral. In other words, uh, God tell the angel of the house, which is the pastor, the pastor uh, tells the leaders and then the leaders share with the congregation. Mm -hmm. But because the congregation uh, is the majority, they feel like they can tell the leaders. And then the leaders, because they're more than the angel of the house of pastor, they want to tell him what they said. Now, 
where do the leader go? He can't go tell God nothing. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Right. So in that same instance, if, if, they, if we can just hold on to that uh, law of harmony, everything God say, filter down, and we allow that and stand our ground, mm -hmm. does not matter if, if members leave the church or not, they're going to come back. Here's the greatest scripture that uh, I love to share with people in the Bible. Christ simply says, well, there's two or three gathered in my name. There I should be in the midst. So many preachers eisegete that text. But to exegete the text, he, he's simply saying this right here. Uh, where I am, there the church should be. Mm -hmm. You with me? So he simply says, I'm organizing a church with just two or three members. But everybody want to have a mega ministry, a mega church, in other words. Mm -hmm. See, I'd rather have a mega ministry than have a mega church. Whoa. Are you with me? Whoa. Because ministry is going to do what thus says the Lord, what God want me to do. But if I just have a big church full of people, then we're not even an inch deep. We're a mile long, but we're not an inch deep. But I'd rather be an inch deep. I'd rather have a ministry because this, is, this was put in place for us to help people, not to hurt them. God simply says, feed my sheep. Don't fleece them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of churches right now is just running through people. Right. I know church is a revolving door and people come and go, uh, but the Bible simply says that if you train up a child in the way that he should go, uh, when he get older, he shall not depart. Not saying that he won't go out there and test the water, yeah. you get me? But the day will come where he can simply say, you know what, I'm going back home. Yeah. But nowadays we're not giving them that, that solid feeding, uh, you know, we're just trying to entertain them. We're yeah. not allowing them to have an encounter with God. So we entertaining them, and you know how entertainment go. Uh, it's in this year, and next year it's out. And if you didn't grasp or get what you needed during that entertaining moment, you're just out there. Mm. Why are church people being labeled hypocrites for condemning those who commit sins? Because this is a big thing going on now. The big thing today is you don't judge. Yeah. Don't judge. You can't judge. Oh, please don't judge. Who are you to judge? Uh, mind your own business, as long as it's not hurting anybody. You know, you can do what you want to do. Uh, like, you know, what part of the game is that? Like, at what part of the game has did that become acceptable in the church? Because, I mean, I, look, man, I'm of the world. I ain't yeah. no in front. Yeah. I ain't no church dude, you know. <laughs> I ain't no church dude, you know. I'm of the world. So, you know, I, it's that... That's supposed to be all right by me, you know. If, if you know, I ain't claiming to be a Christian or a religious person that's practicing a certain uh, discipline and all mm -hmm. that type of stuff. I'm of the world, you know. <laughs> yeah. But so, but for me, you know, I, I, when I look at the people who are in church, if you want me to come into the church, I'm thinking you you need to be on a higher level to, than me spiritually, you know, like spiritually. Mm -hmm. Or, and I ain't going to even say spiritually because I am on a different level spiritually, but you need to be on a, on a different level, at least morally. You right, know, like, right, right. Be right. on a level that I'm not on. Be on a level that I need to aspire to be on. Right, morally. M morally. Right. Instead of, like, when I look at a lot of, you know, I, I, I look at a lot of things that's going on in the church and I'm like, man, I'm not following. You look like a fool. I, I would look like a fool following this person or that person. Yeah. So, when you do have those church people that are following the rules and that are following the principles, because mm -hmm. everybody like you know one of the favorite things that pastors and everybody like to uh, look in your Bible, turn the turn the page, such and such such such. such. Mm -hmm. So, what part, what what part of the game is it that when you do tell somebody that they will be condemned for a particular sin? Mm -hmm. that you are called a hypocrite and that is allowed to stand. Well, see, we, we, we have a, a, a mass confusion between judging and telling the truth. Okay. Are you with me? And it's all in the attitude. Um, you can share something with somebody and not judge them, but tell them the truth. So, when, and telling the truth is... Is that condemnation? Now, is kind of, first of all, is condemnation right? 
should you condemn people or is that God's job? That's God's job. Okay, that's he, God's he's job. He's the only judge. Okay. He's the only judge. All right, that's God's job. Right, that's God's job. But I can't tell you the truth. Okay. Now. But why do they confuse the truth with condemnation? Why do, why do they say it's condemnation? Yeah, well, you know, once again, you, you, you have people who are, and, and I know I'm going to be bashed for this, but who are unlearned okay. when it comes to the word of God. Okay. Are you with me? I, let me share this with you. I, I say this all the time that there's a difference between questioning God and asking God a question. You can okay. use the same words. You can use the same phrase, but it's all in the attitude. Okay. If I'm going through something, uh, listen to my attitude. I can say, God, why am I going through this? You with me? Mm-hmm. So I'm asking him a question. Okay. But if I'm going through something and I got a bad attitude, it's going to go a little something like this. God, why am I going through this? You know, like I'm trying to, trying, trying to chastise God. Okay. In that same instance, you know, we have a, um, a problem in the church because we want to point the finger at people. Mm-hmm. And remember, whenever you point a finger at somebody, you got three more pointing back at you. Okay. So my morals now have to be in standard to what God says. I have to walk circumspectly before God before I can even tell somebody of the truth. Okay. You get what I mean? So yeah. that way I don't be a hypocrite. And on top of that, I will not be condemning them. Okay. Because it does not matter if, if, uh, if you go to a person and say, well, that's not right. Morally, you're out of line. You shouldn't have done this. You shouldn't have done that. Versus going up to them and talking about you was wrong. You shouldn't have did this. and You shouldn't have done it like that. Which one you think they're likely to receive? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. If I'm talking to them, right. they're going to receive it. But if I talk at them, okay. then they're going to look at me and say, you can't judge me. Right. <laughs> you get what I mean? Right. You know, and, that, and that's, that's one of the problems in the church today. I mean, do, do, do pastors have a right to do whatever they want to in their private life and that be totally separate from what they do in the pulpit? Uh, the reason why I'm asking you this question is because there was a pastor in Houston who was on the Isaiah Factor. I, for all you guys that don't know Isaiah Factor, Isaiah is like the top reporter in Houston. And he, uh, he did this uh, story on this pastor who... Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Was making sex tapes. <laughs> he was making, the, pastor, the pastor was making sex tapes. Like, and like... Yeah, yeah, you know, adult tapes, you know, like, and I actually was online reading some of the comments, and there was somebody, sure enough, on there saying, well, you can't judge him, you judge not, what does it say, judge, judge not that ye not, may not be judged. Not mm-hmm. that ye may not be judged, exactly. Yeah. And they were like, you know, that what he doing in his private life, his personal life is his business. Yeah, yeah, see, once again. We're hold to a higher standard as a pastor. Uh, when I say walk circumspectly before the Lord, uh, I'm not a perfect man, but my morals have to always be in check. In other words, you don't lead a double life. Uh, uh, neither. See, see, a lot of pastors don't want to be transparent. You get what I mean? Mm-hmm. In other words, they want to be uh, the dictator. Uh, they want to say, do as I say but not as I do. Mm-hmm. If, if a pastor, and, and I'm not bashing any of them, I'm just telling the truth. Mm-hmm. If a pastor lifestyle privately uh, spills over into the public scene and his private lifestyle is demeaning, mm-hmm. you with me? Then he have to be able to check himself and clean himself up. Uh, you know, go to God, repent, go to the congregation. But at no point as a pastor... Should you allow uh, your private life uh, to outweigh your spiritual life? Right. You with me? Because your private life, people are looking at you. And then what they do, when, they, when you get exposed, then they put every pastor in the same boat. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll say, oh, that's why I don't go to church. You know, they ain't right. They doing this and they doing that. No, that's situation specific. That person did it. For themselves and they don't stand and speak for every other pastor you know across this nation because there are still some of us who are 
uh, committed to God. I tell people this all the time. I'm true to this. I'm not new to it. Mm-hmm. You get what I mean? So if I'm true to it, I have some nevers. You know, and um, I think every pastor should establish some nevers in their private give life. Can I give, give, give one of them? Uh, um, um, I would never cheat on my wife. Okay. You with me? I would never be a child molester. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Right. Uh, I would never, and, and, and I know this is, these are my nevers. Okay. I would never be a homosexual. Okay. You get what I'm saying? And you hear some people say, uh, well, no, you can never say never. No, there, there are some nevers you can say, mm-hmm. you know, because I know for a fact uh, that these are some things that I would never do. Mm-hmm. I would rather uh, end my life than to be put in that position in doing any one of those. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Right. Well, man, let's talk about some of those when we come back. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to get right back at it with Bishop Ronald Hopes. You did? Right. I'm with you.